I had this idea for this book a long time ago, 12 years ago in San Francisco. I had finished a book. I was living there at the time and lots of time on my hands, um, exercising, going to yoga classes, going to group fitness classes. And I was up on a Stairmaster one day, pushed in my program, 25 minutes, fat burner, level 15. And for some reason on that day, I just stopped for a moment. I looked out at this gym floor, all these people doing crazy things in machines and lifting weights and chin-ups and pull-ups and yoga. And I just thought, how did we all end up here? How did we all end up in gyms and exercising? And if I were to trace a line backward in time, where would I land? So I literally left the, got off the Stairmaster, left the gym and went to the library thinking I'd find a book in the card catalog on the history of exercise. And I didn't. And as a writer who'd already published three books, a light bulb went off and I thought, wow, that'd be a great subject. But it was many, it was several years before I really got into doing research and, and focusing on the book. Well, there are two things. One, I was really surprised that so much of their advice, whether it's Hippocrates or Galen or Plato, if we're talking about the ancients, really had sensible advice. A lot of it really holds up that exercise should be a part of your daily life that exercise they defined as vigorous movement that got your uh, lungs breathing and um, that you sweated, even though they may not have understood the exact mechanisms for that. Um, so it was definitely something that they wrote about and felt was important to health. The other thing you need to know though, and this is true of Mercuriale as well, they didn't yet have a correct understanding of how the human body works. Uh, for 14 centuries or more, they believed in the concept of the four humors and did not know about the circulation of the blood by the beat of the heart, which didn't come until William Harvey discovered that. So whether it's Hippocrates or Galen or Mercuriali in the 16th century, their advice about exercise is still based upon balancing those four kind of fantastical humors. So you sort of have to take that into account and with a grain of salt. Yeah, and it's probably the exact same advice that Hippocrates gave back in the fifth century BC and Galen. Um, one of the very best forms of exercise simply is walking, a good walk, 20, 30 minutes a day. The important thing is to get your body moving uh, vigorously. Um, what I love about walking is that it's something you can do with a friend or partner. Um, doesn't require any equipment. Doesn't require membership in a gym. Um, and if you're someone who feels guilty and feels like you never exercise, I say, well, maybe just get off two bus stops early or two subway stops early and walk the rest of the way home. That's exercise. Um, so walking is great. For me personally, I love to swim and I'm lucky to um, go to a gym that has a really wonderful, really wonderful pool. And uh, my late partner, Oliver Sachs, was a great swimmer. And so that became sort of part of our relationship. We swam two or three times a week. So um, swimming, walking, um, running, of course. I'm, you know, I'm now 60, so running is harder on my knees and my feet. Um, but I always go for good long walks. Well, it's, it's definitely not a book made to feel you guilty about not exercising. <laughs> My hope is that even people who hate exercise might enjoy this book. It's a kind of literary excursion too. It's a book about um, discovering long lost manuscripts. You, a reader might be surprised that I probably spend as much time in libraries and archives in this book as I do in gyms. So it's, um, it's really a search into the past and, um, and what still makes sense and applies for us today.